In order to level up your automation skills, it helps to understand the biggest component of the Zapier editor, fields. Think of fields as mini containers or placeholders for your app information. Fields help you get your information from app A to app B. When you're creating your Zap in the editor, you need to tell Zapier what app information you want to use and where you want it to go. We call this process field mapping. Apps contain all sorts of data with different purposes. For example, a timestamp may indicate when a certain thing occurred in an app or when something is scheduled. A file attachment may need to be uploaded somewhere. Zapier can tell the difference. When you're in the editor, you may see small icons next to certain fields. These icons represent different field types, which help tell your Zap how to handle a piece of data. There are five common field types you'll often come across in the editor. One, date time fields. When you see a little calendar and clock icon, this means you can only input a date or time. And you can use formats like tomorrow at 9 a.m., next Wednesday at noon, and more. You can even add or subtract time within a field if you'd like. If you're not specific about your time zone, Zapier is going to default to the time zone in your account settings. So just make sure that's set up. Two, number fields. You'll see a one, two, three icon here. You can only enter whole numbers. It's often used to select ID numbers for users, projects, and other internal app information. Three, true false fields. This is pretty simple since you only have two options, true or false. For example, your app action may give you the option to overwrite a file. Depending on the app, true false values may be marked as zero for false or one for true. These fields are also case sensitive. You'll see two circles if you encounter a true false field. Four, file fields. This field type is marked with a folded page icon. You'll need to refer to the actual file object, such as a photo. And depending on the app, it may be the file itself, the file name with the extension included, or a URL. If an actual file is selected in a file field, Zapier is going to upload it. Five, decimal fields. These accept decimal values like 8.5. For example, you might see this in delay steps where you need to indicate how long you want your Zap to wait before completing your actions. So, how do you get information from your trigger app into your action? Well, whenever you're customizing your Zap action in the editor, you can enter a static value, dynamic value, or both in any field. Okay, but what does that mean? A static value is a fancy way of saying anytime you enter text in a field. We call this a static value because it never changes. Anytime you enter a static value in a field, it'll be the same every time your Zap runs. For example, a message in Slack reminding you to take lunch every day. Dynamic values are information from earlier steps in your Zap. They change every time your Zap runs because it depends on data your apps receive. Let's say you want to send meeting reminders to a specific Slack channel. You can use dynamic values to insert calendar information so every time your Zap runs, your Slack reminder will have the latest meeting information. It's easy to insert dynamic values. Whenever you're creating your action, just click on an empty field in the editor. You'll see a drop down menu with dynamic values from previous steps in your Zap. The app icons next to each value will tell you what app information you're looking at. Find the value you want to use and select it. You can select multiple dynamic values if you'd like too. And you're not limited to static or dynamic values. You can insert both into any field. Once your Zap is turned on, those dynamic values will use real information from your apps whenever your Zap runs. The static values will remain the same. Whew, that was a lot. So let's recap. In the Zap Editor, fields help you get your information from App A to App B. When you're creating your Zap in the Editor, you need to tell Zapier what app information you want to use and where you want it to go. We call this process field mapping. There are five common field types in the Editor, each marked with a little icon. Date time fields, number fields, true false fields, file fields, and decimal fields. Each of these tell your Zap how to handle a piece of data, whether it's to schedule something or upload a file. And finally, you can enter both static values, dynamic values into any field. A static value stays the same, such as text, while dynamic values change depending on information your apps receive. 
You can select dynamic values from previous steps in your Zap by clicking on a field and selecting from a drop down menu. You can also add text in the same field if you'd like. You still with us? We're just getting started. In the next lesson, get ready for a crash course in custom values. We'll see you there. If you learned something from this video, could you do us a favor and hit the like button? That helps us create more content like this to help you do more with Zapier. Consider subscribing too, so you're in the know when we post new videos.